This project is extremely high voltage, so please follow every safety precaution you can if you build this. Alright, let's get into it. I just wanted to show up front, this is our schematic that we're going to use. Don't worry, I'm going to show it again later and explain it. This is a voltage multiplier that I've already built, and I just wanted to take the time to show you the back diodes. It's important the way they go in. On the front here we want a clean look we just want to space them out evenly we're going to start here with our plain prototyping board again this is not the green one this has no metal in it it's just a plain board this part right here is pretty much up to your discretion on how you want to place these in here all i would say is you want to keep it neat and clean make it nice so take your time count out the little holes move the things around uh, it's just important that they line up in a row. And the more evenly spaced you have these, the better off you're going to be on the next part of the project. I generally like to keep three holes in between each capacitor. That keeps it pretty even all the way down the line. Now, it's just boring and tedious process you have to do here. And I'm going to skip through this just a little bit, just so that you can see that they go in there evenly. Once we get to six, we're just going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. Now that we have them all put in place, we're going to go ahead and turn this board over. And we're going to take a look real quick at the uh, original that we started with. And then we're going to go ahead and make ours just like it. We're going to start here at the bottom. These two just hang off the end here. Don't worry about them. Let's go on to the next ones. We just cross each one over in a row going down the line. Once you get all that done, the top two, just like the bottom two, will go off the end of the board. Now all the ones we crossed over each other have to be soldered together. There's a couple ways of doing this. In this one I'm going to show you right here in the beginning. We're going to go ahead and solder it and then cut the ends and clean up the solder. And I'll show you another way in a minute. This is the second way to do it, and generally the way I prefer to do it. Once they're crossed over each other and you know the size, then go ahead and just cut them off, line them up, and we're just going to solder them like that. When you're doing this part, just take your time and do it. Sometimes these things bend funny, sometimes they're not pushed all the way in. It's just kind of annoying, but you have to kind of get through it. When you're done cutting and soldering them, they should look just like this. Now that we're all cut and soldered up, let's go ahead and take a look at the two pieces of metal that we hang over the side from the capacitor. You can see that we're going to start our first diode right here, going directly to one of those. I know I just skipped over a little bit and soldered a bunch in, but the most important thing here is to look at the direction where that little gray strip is. That's the most important thing when you put in these diodes, is make sure it matches this. Just to show you how I do this, I go ahead and I put the diode over the top. I just cut it to length right so it sits right on top of it. And then I go ahead and solder it in. One thing to note when you do this, you don't want to leave any sharp edges. So when you smooth that solder over, make sure it's nice and clean and smooth. When you're going from left to right like this, I like to always solder in the side that has only one connection going into it first. Then I bring it back over to the other. Once you get your size cut right here, you're going to want to put your thumb right over the two diodes themselves. And you're going to want to hold this thing down while you put some solder on here. It's just a lot easier. It makes it connect easier. And you don't have to mess around with stuff. At this point, we'll only have two more diodes to put in. Again, look up at the top on those two pieces of metal we left hanging over from the capacitor. We're going to connect to those now. As we put in these last two diodes, again, I just want you to take a look at where they sit in comparison to the capacitor. And now let's put in that final diode so we can complete this project. On the left side here, the metal coming from the capacitor is now unneeded. The other side we leave long because it's the power side. 
At this point our voltage multiplier is complete. Let's go ahead and compare it with the original and let's make sure everything turned out right. As you can see everything matches up. We did a good job. Now it's time to test this thing again. I just wanted to make sure you use all safety precautions. Okay, so we're going to compare right here. Here is our battery on our right side and our ZVS. Again, here we go. I only have one side connected right now. The other side is this far side. These two are communication in the center. And that's our negative right there. The white was our positive going on this one. So we have it there. We go to our flyback right here, AC flyback. You can see it goes over on the bottom side and under on the top side. Again, two wires coming off. Exactly what we got here. Then we go ahead and look each wire. They're both connected to one side. So let's take a look now. Here we go. Here's our multiplier. Here's our sketch of what we wanted to do. Again, you see the ground on the right side. Power coming out of the single. So let's see. Two wires here where the, this wire is. Power on this side. Ground on this side. We look at it coming in. And now we got our spark. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Let's see what we can do. As you can see, we all work. It looks good. I like it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the parts we needed for this project. Here are the capacitors right here, 20 kV. Here are the diodes that we used. Again, mostly important, high frequency Tesla coil diodes. Do not just buy regular high voltage diodes. They will not work. Here is the prototyping board that I used. And just so you know, the capacitors, the diodes, and the prototyping board are all on Amazon that you can pick up. This is the AC flyback that I used. I got it on eBay. It's from out of the country, so it takes a couple weeks to get here if you order it. The last thing on the list is a ZVS. This one is a 1000 watt ZVS. The exact same one I used, and this is also available on Amazon. And this is the schematic that we use today. Hopefully it helps you guys out in building this project. Again, be safe. If you like what you saw here today, please like and subscribe.